Hi. Ja. Hi. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It looks nice. Uh, so, okay, I'm Liwo. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to be here. Um, I have been an XPKGs contributor since several years now, it's since, since uh, 2015 or something like this. Um, I'm currently working for Gandhi, uh, but I'm here to talk about a side project I start working on several months ago now, which is a uh, name next to container. Uh, the talk is divided into two main parts. Uh, the first part is about, uh, I will provide a brief history about uh, function in Nix packages to build container image. And then in the second part, I will talk about uh, the Nix to container project itself. But uh, first of all, what is a container image? So the goal here is just to provide a brief overview about what a container image is and not go into all, uh, all detail. Uh, so a container image is basically composed by three type of artifact, uh, layers, a configuration file, and a manifest file. A layer is basically a tarball that contains a root file system. So here we can see that uh, we have the, the hello uh, store pass. Um, so we have the hello binary uh, and some shared directory, etc. Then this, this uh, file system is tarred. And an important thing to note is that layer uh, in a container image is a content addressable uh, artifact. This means that the name of the, um, the, name of the artifact is, ba uh, is based on its content. So for instance, to generate the name A820, etc., cetera, uh, we generate the tar stream of uh, the file system and get a checksum on, uh, on this uh, tar stream. Then we can have several layers in an in a image. Uh, so here there is two layers. And at runtime, the container engine takes all of these layers, stacks them together, uh, thanks to some overlay FS uh, kernel uh, Linux kernel feature, and starts, uh, starts, starts some binary. The second type of um, artifact is a configuration. Uh, it's basically a JSON file. And the JSON file describes how to run a container um, and also some metadata. So here we have the, the architecture, uh, the OS, which is Linux, and then the configuration file, the configuration itself. Uh, so this means that the user, the container will be run with a root user. And if we start the container without any argument, uh, we will start the hello binary. Finally, the last type of artifact is uh, the manifest file. And the manifest file is basically uh, a file which points to, to all the artifacts that uh, make the, con the, the container. So we can see we have in this container, we have um, the configuration, one configuration, and two layers. Uh, we, can, we can imagine that. Building this artifact with Nix is pretty easy. We have to build tarball, uh, we have to build JSON file, and this, uh, this manifest file. If you want to go into detail, there is uh, the OCI specification, um, which describes exactly how this, uh, this stuff are, are, are built. So now let's see how to, to build uh, this kind, how to build a container with uh, Nix packages. Um, so in the, the first, the first the initial function is uh, called docker tools that build image. This function has been introduced in, I think, 2016 in Nix packages. Um, we can see the, and the we can see the the, the Nix expression to, to build the an image that runs a hello binary. Um, a minimal configuration is or a minimal expression is uh, contains has to contain a name and the entry point. Uh, this function, when, when building the, this expression, uh, the function will generate the configuration file by, uh, by using the, this entry point, and then it generates a closure of uh, the hello store pass, and takes this closure, put it in a, in a tarball, uh, put it in a tarball, and it makes, uh, it makes an image. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy. There are some small details, but uh, that's not important. Um, once we have, um, and then we take all of these artifacts, we put them in a tarball, and we can submit this tarball to a container engine by using, for instance, Docker, Docker load. Or we can also use uh, Scopeo, which is a tool to manipulate uh, container, container image uh, between uh, container engine or registry. And in this example, so we, we built 
uh, this image. Uh, we, we build this image and we want to we, we want to copy it into to our local Docker daemon, and then uh, we can uh, we can run this image. Uh, Scopeo um, has to do basically three things. Uh, it first um, gets uh, the digest of layers. Uh, it can then query the, the destination if this layer already exists or not. Uh, if they don't already exist, they, uh, then it has to, to push it. And finally, it will, uh, it will push the configuration and write the, the manifest file. Uh, so it's pretty nice. Um, we, have, uh, we can benefit from the whole Nix packages ecosystem to build our container images, but we, we could improve this by several ways. The first improvement is uh, in the build image function, only one layer is built, but uh, in our Nix store, we have a lot of store paths, so maybe we could, and a container image can contain several layers, so maybe we could try to, 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 to put some store paths into dedicated layers. And the objective is that if you have several image on uh, your container engine or in your registry, then we don't have to duplicate all store paths in, uh, in images. We could share layer between images. Um, that's what has been proposed uh, in the build layer image function. It has been introduced in, I think, two, layers, two, two years later, uh, in about 2018 uh, by Graham. Um, so if the, um, the API is, uh, is the same, it's uh, still, we, have, we are now using the build layout image function. The expression does not, does not have to be uh, updated. And in this case, um, uh, the function will produce now four layer, uh, only four layer because the, the hello binary closure contains uh, only four stoppers. Um, so yeah, it, it's nice, but the, there is uh, there is some limitation. Is um, I don't know exactly what the number is. I think it's about uh, 128, but it's uh, so the Linux kernel has some limitation about the number of overlay FS uh, you you can stack. There are also some performances issue, uh, I, uh, I guess. So if our closure contains more than 100 stoppers, then we want to decide. Uh, uh, what are the stoppers that we want to put in separated layer, and what are the stoppers we want to put together? Um, so in this blog post, there are some an interesting algorithm that try to which contain a heuristic to decide which stoppers we want to to, to pack together. Uh, so now it's uh, it's nice because uh, we can share layer between images, but we still produce one table that contains all uh, stoppers each time we build an image. So. For instance, if you rebuild the image, then we generate a new a new table, and the new table will take a lot of space in uh, the, in the Nix store, and it's uh, consume also a lot of files. To address this issue, two later, two, two years later, another function has been introduced, which is stream layered image. Um, the idea here is instead of producing a table in our store pass, we will produce a script, and the script at runtime will stream the table on STD out. And then we can pipe uh, this, uh, this stream uh, to, Docker set, uh, to Docker load or to Scopio. Um, so here we have built this expression. We don't have anything to, to change except in the, the function name. And we can it, it then produce a script. We can execute the script and then pipe it to, to Scopio. Uh, it's nice because now we no longer have to write uh, the wall images in our, in our Nix store, so it preserves a lot of disk space. It's, uh, it's faster in terms of IOs. Um, but we, each time we want to push the image, we still have to, to generate the wall, the wall uh, task stream because we want to generate checksum and, and stuff like this. Uh, and maybe we could, uh, we could improve this. Um, that's one of the objectives of uh, the Nix2 container project. Um, um, so the, the, the Nix2 container project has, I had several objectives in mind. Um, so the first one is to avoid creating archive in the Nix store, in our Nix store. Um, but I wanted, I also wanted to, to be able to efficiently skip already push layer without having to, to read the task stream again or build the task stream uh, each time I want to push an image. Um, I, want, I wanted also to explore some possibility to reuse Scopeo uh, mechanism because Scopeo is able to manipulate image between, uh, between registry. So maybe we, can, we could teach Scopeo to build or generate an image from some Nix stuff 
and uh, and use all its internal mechanism to to really create the, to actually create the, the image. Uh, another objective is um, I think some other project has same the same uh, uh, the same needs that uh, that that we have, uh, and I'm thinking about uh, Geeks and Bazel. Uh, basically, they. They also want to. They, they also have some kind of store pass, and they want to to build some images from store pass. So maybe creating a tool uh, which is Nix agnostic uh, could be could be interesting. And finally, to ease the adoption of the tool, uh, I wanted to keep a quite similar interface uh, than the ones that we know in uh, in, um, in our Docker tools. Uh, and currently, uh, it's, it's hosted in my uh, in my uh, GitHub uh, GitHub, uh, GitHub space. So, uh, how does it work? So, basically, next to container, um, the, the, this is a two-step process. Uh, the first step is uh, at build time, next to container, build some JSON file to describe an image, and we store this JSON file into our next store. And at runtime, uh, when we want to actually create the image, uh, we will use Scopeo. And Scopio consumes this JSON file and actually generates the image. Uh, regarding so now, how it looks like the, the generated JSON file? Um, we generate two kind of two kind of file. Uh, one file to describe layers and another file to describe the image configuration. And we can see here an example of uh, image.layer file for the hello binary. Actually, it's not exactly the hello binary because there is only two star paths, while the, 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 the hello close view would contain four star paths. Um, and yeah, this JSON file uh, is basically a list of layers, and a layer is described by uh, a list of paths, and the list of paths are basically the, the store paths that we want to put into our layer. And there is also the, the, a digest. And the digest is, uh, to generate this digest, we, we take all of these store paths, generate a task, a task stream in memory, and compute uh, computer checksum and write this checksum into uh, into the, the JSON file. Um, the second kind of artifact uh, is uh, the image configuration, and it's pretty. Yeah, we have the image configuration with the entry points, and then we have a, a layer list, and the, this uh, this list actually points to to previously generated image uh, layers the JSON file. Uh, once we have built this file, uh, we can then uh, we can then use Copeo. Um, we we added a, a, a Nix transport. It's important to note it's not upstream yet, uh, so we are, we are maintaining a, a small patch in a, in a Nix to container, uh, a small Scopeo patch in Nix to container. And um, we can now provide an image to configuration file to Scopeo, and we can we can copy this uh, image to a Docker daemon, a Docker registry, uh, all uh, supported uh, Scopeo destination. Um, okay, so this is basically how it uh, how it works. And um, now we want to explore another uh, another use case. It's sometimes we are working on an image, um, or we are working on a software, and the software is packaged as a container image. And we want to be able to 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 rebuild and repush this container as fast as possible. Uh, when you are uh, especially in a, in a development uh, context. Um, and so the idea is, uh, could we could we actually uh, manually uh, isolate some uh, some part of the closure into dedicated layer? And this is what we what we will see uh, now. Uh, so at line six, there is um, we are building a glibc layer. Um, we are using the next to container build image. Uh, sorry, uh, next to container build layer function, and this function will create a, a layer.json file. And this uh, this JSON file, or we'll create a derivation that build a JSON file, and this JSON file contains the glibc closure. And now we are manually uh, using this uh, layer into our build image function, and this means that the build image the, the build image derivation now depends on uh, the, the glibc layer derivation. Uh, and we will build uh, we will build the image. The the build image function is able to it, when it will build the, the hello closure, it will know that uh, a part of the closure already exists in some other layer, uh, and then it can remove this path from the closure. So this means that um, 
you know, this means that now we are building actually uh, two layers file, <coughs> two layer the JSON file, and the, 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 the layer that contains the hello binary uh, no longer have the, the glibc closure because it is in, a, in another layer. And the advantages of doing this manually is that we have now two derivations, and this means that at build time, uh, if we change something in the hello binary but not in the glibc, we only have to rebuild the, the hello binary, the hello layer, sorry. Um, so on the hello binary, it does not seem to be really useful, but um, now if you think about a Python application, uh, you have your Python code base, you have your Python environment, your Python environment is quite a big closure with the Python interpreter, all Python module, etc. Um, we could now isolate our Python environment into a dedicated layer and build an image uh, for, your for our application, and the application uh, code base is in a, a really small layer, and when we work on our Python code base, we can rebuild and repush uh, really efficiently uh, our image because we don't have to, 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 to build and push again um, uh, the, the, Python, the Python environment. Um, now a few words about uh, the next to container implementation. Uh, it's basically two things. Uh, at build time, we are using uh, a, a, Go, a Go program that takes basically a graph of store pass and some other, some other stuff, but basically it takes a graph of uh, store pass and generates uh, the JSON file. So this could be used by a Bazel or Geeks or some other project easily. And at runtime, um, the, the next to container uh, repository expose a Go library, and this Go library is able to consume this JSON file and produce uh, basically task stream. And this library is used uh, at runtime by uh, by Scopio to yeah, to actually produce uh, images. Uh, so to conclude, it's still a really young project, but it's already usable. Uh, there are several of you that uh, are already using it. Uh, it's also used uh, in the standard framework. Uh, I don't. So they are building some dev container stuff for VS Code. I, I don't really know what what what, uh, what is the purpose exactly, uh, but they are using uh, they are they are using uh, Nix to container. And now the next step for for the project is uh, some 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 people uh, would like to um, to improve the layered algorithm uh, or the the, 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 the 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 heuristics that choose which store pass we want to pack together. And the goal would be to take the store pass size into account, which is currently not the case. Um, and another big, uh, big step is to upstream the Scopeo patch. And then yeah, we, would, we will have to talk with the OCI community and, and this, kind of, uh, this kind of guy. And finally, uh, I would like to, to add next to, next to container into next packages. Uh, yeah, that's all for me. Thanks for your attention. Um, if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh -huh. So are there any questions? And the microphone is quiet, but it's working at least. Uh, hi. Uh, is uh, this supporting the uh, two-point uh, the version two manifest, and if not, can be made to do so. And if so, is that reusable for the rest of the? Uh, 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 you, you mean the, the the OCI manifest? Yes. Yes. Actually, we are we are not generating a OCI manifest. I'm just generating a JSON file, and Scopio is generating this manifest. So I don't really have to care about uh, uh, this kind of thing because it's down by Scopio. Hi. Um, so if Scopio is handling that part, do the layers also get compressed now? Because V2 supports compressed layers. Oh, so, sorry, I did not hear. Well, it... So uh, with, with V2 of, of the container spec, you can yeah. have compressed layers. Yes. You said Scopio handles taking you know, what you point to and then turning it into a container. So does it take those and compress them? I, I, to be honest, I, I'm not sure, but I think so, because basically I'm generating, the Go library is generating internal Scopio data structure, and these data structures are consumed by the Scopio engine, so I think it is doing, it is doing this. There was one more question online, uh, online uh, about how 
this tool could help with like statically built, statically linked uh, binaries. About sorry, what? Um, how it can help with statically linked uh, binaries, so statically. Built. Uh, I or don't think it be. can be helpful. I don't think it's helpful for uh, yeah for statically linked binary because you don't. I, I think the main target is uh, Node.js, uh, Python stuff because yeah there, there is a runtime environment that that can be shared between rebuilds and between images, which is not the case with a static binary. Okay, thank you very much again. You're welcome.